How to rebuild a Stuart Models 5A steam engine part 14, cleaning up the steam chest cover and making the valve rod fork, showing some common mistakes when making parts like this. And when I say parts like this, I don't mean what's on screen at the moment, which is a steam chest cover. I'm about to clean that up on some wet or dry sandpaper. The first thing I need is some machine oil, maybe a bit more than this. I've speeded up the video to make the job appear easier and quicker, and here I'm applying some more oil to make sure that the sandpaper cuts more freely. I could use water because it is wet or dry sandpaper, but water and cast iron equals rust, and I don't want any of that on the steam chest cover. This took a lot longer than I'm showing on screen. I just went up and down the piece of sandpaper for quite a while. I changed the sandpaper for another sheet, but I didn't bother showing that. After much toing and froing on the sandpaper, finally the steam chest cover looks quite nice. I don't want it to be too shiny. I don't want it to look like it's been chrome plated. I just want it to look nice and smooth. And I'm quite happy with this finish. And now what this video is really about, making the valve fork showing some common mistakes that beginners often make. I'm making the mistakes so that you don't have to. The first thing to do is to mark out the piece of metal. This is a half inch square piece of bar. I should be using marking out blue or some sort of paint, but I'm not, I'm just scratching away with my small needle file. But at least I can see the marks, which is all that matters. I've marked out the piece of bar according to the dimensions on the drawing. And this is the mistake. I mark the position of the hole where it's supposed to be. No problem there, really, you would say but I didn't leave any excess material, so I will have a problem when I come to grind this round on the belt sander later on. What I should have done is allowed at least a sixteenth of an inch more on the end of the bar that's facing the camera. I'm currently using a centre drill, but when I use the three sixteenths of an inch drill, I will find that the hole is quite close to the edge of the valve fork. And if you watch this clip very closely, you will see that when I drill the hole, and this is one imperial size under 3 sixteenths of an inch, because I intend to use a 3 sixteenths reamer to accurately size the hole. You can see how close to the edge of the piece of metal it is. And this is a fundamental mistake. Always leave a little bit more metal that you can remove, because you can remove metal, but you cannot put it back. Not without considerable difficulty. In this clip, I'm using a reamer. It's a 3 sixteenths reamer, and this is the final sizing of the hole to 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. And of course, because it's reamed, it will have a good surface finish. Over now to the milling machine. You will notice that I've put this piece of metal in the milling machine and I'm going forward and backwards, not side to side. If it was milling from left to right or right to left, it wouldn't be good. There's not enough surface area on this piece of metal for it to be successfully held in the machine vise for the operation to be going from left to right or right to left. It's better going across like this. However, this isn't the mistake. The mistake is using an extremely blunt slot drill that I picked out of my drawer of old and extremely blunt slot drills. And this is to simulate the fact that most beginners do not have an excess of equipment. And often as a beginner, you have to use what you've got. I removed the old and blunt slot drill and replaced it with a nice sharp end mill. And now as you can see, it's cutting much better. I'm having to apply far less pressure to the hand wheel to move the cutter across the work. And it's cutting much more freely and without the burrs. The slot in this valve fork has to be accurately machined. And the slot needs to be 930 seconds of an inch wide, which is the size of the expansion link that's going to be fitted in there. So I suppose I could use a 930 seconds of an inch end mill or slot drill. But the problem is, I don't have a 930 seconds of an inch slot drill or end mill. And for me, the main problem I have with small milling cutters is they do tend to wander about. If I was to use a 930 seconds of an inch slot drill or end mill, it would cut a slot 930 seconds of an inch wide in the piece of steel. But the problem is that the internal surfaces of the slot would not be very well finished. So what I'm doing is using a smaller cutter, which is I think about a quarter of an inch, maybe metric, and I go right down the centre to start with, and then I move to the edges, and I clean up the edges once the slot has been milled. And that way I get a very good finish. Here is mistake number three, and this is a bad one. Whenever you're machining a piece of metal, it's really important to figure out the sequence of events, the running order. So what's wrong here? Well, I threaded the valve fork quarter by 32 to match the valve spindle. 
and now I have to turn the last quarter of an inch of the valve fork from square to round. But as I've removed most of the metal, it's not very secure in the chuck. And here's mistake number four. And no, it's not using a tap to support the piece while I grind it away on the belt sander. It's the fact that I'm doing this freehand and therefore I'm prone to making mistakes. And also the hole was very close to the edge as I mentioned right at the beginning of the video. What I should have done is used a couple of washers and followed the pattern of the washers to make sure that the end of it was perfectly round. This clip shows me cleaning up the valve fork on a piece of scotch bright. Scotch bright is ideal for this job because I don't want a polish finish, that wouldn't look right. And also, using the polishing spindle would round off all the corners. Here I'm using a needle file to remove the only burr that's in there, which is the part where the tap broke through. And finally, once again using the scotch bright, I'm cleaning up the slot. And there's the finished thing, and it looks okay. I do like doing videos like this now and again. Showing how not to do the job rather than showing how to do the job. Even though the part looks fine at the end of the video, it's not. It's not perfect at all. I had to grind down the outside edge somewhat to get it to look right. And to evaluate whether I'm going to keep this or make another, because when I'm not videoing it, it's a very quick process making one of these. But I made a cross pin. This is a piece of 3 16 of an inch diameter stainless steel. And I cut a 2BA thread at each end of it to take a pair of 2BA nuts. And as you can see from this clip, I don't think the valve fork is the shape I want it to be. So I will be making another one. And I'll probably show that in the next video. Before the end of this video, I'd just like to say a few words. I've been in the audio and video business in a professional capacity for many years. And when I first started doing these steam videos in my workshop, I did it just for fun. And I enjoy the feedback that I get from beginners who are being helped by them. I'm not retired, this is not just something I do in retirement, I still have to work, I have things to pay. I'm putting at least 35 hours a week into just making these videos so you would not believe how long it takes. Not just the machining, not just the filming, not just the editing and the voicing over like I'm doing at the moment. So this morning I posted this video and outlined the fact that I have a Patreon account and mentioned one or two details saying some of the special stuff will go on Patreon first and generally inviting people to join Patreon. It's not compulsory, it was just an idea. But it was met with great disdain from quite a few viewers. The keyboard warriors were out in force this morning, and I received about 10 or 12 very bad comments, some of which were positively weird. On this channel, there are currently 897 videos, and that's not including this one. And most of them are on the subject of model steam engines or model engineering. I temporarily took down the video and I've revoiced this part of it. And all I've got to say now is thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.